Neoism consists of methods to eternally derive new texts from existent Neoist writing. Thought must be regarded as the god of plagiarism, lord of the plagiaristic process. Neoists are monsters of conceit. The so-called festival s of plagiarism were essentially an outgrowth of the Neoist apartment festivals, collective events which themselves plagiarized the Fluxhut festivals of a few years before. The primary difference between the festivals of plagiarism and the Neoist festivals were the plagiarist's intention to focus on a single set of ideas, plagiarism and so forth. Plagiarism had been an element of Neoist activity, but Neoist festivals had and have an omnidirectional character and involved an assortment of experimentation and exotic in presentations, politics and habitation. During the Festival of Plagiarism in London, a repetitive critique of ownership and originality in culture was juxtaposed with collective events, in which a majority of participants did not explicitly agree with the polemics. Many of the participants simply wanted to have their aesthetic and vaguely political artwork exposed, and found the festival a receptive vehicle for doing so. Neoism and its successive clones made use of circular logic and turned it into rhetoric. We consider it imperative that all activities be called Neoism, and all individuals adopt the specific name of Monty Kansin. Qualities Greater than flaming hard frozen small old dog. Greater than possibles and or states. Greater than severity. E.g. the Kuzak that a piston deck pyrexial say use nuberlize kevla woodle pislexia mazal apparated chi or tu 1637 eu a series of stinky stg ugu 1625. Or to start up frau the observation out that there care to key a strike you to pussy for kiss lexic chulbria to sham a reversal you right left, opsod os nbpo mu orientation you we review letters or morks e.g. ad for p or sam for maz and vice versa. So I address Akmaz he myth the I cortos of this burau you that he drabos at the terwistrabhisi polia. Mr. Psychols. As a kesduatio for pivalid woodle bilexia. He collect the wisri apu of letters, typically rebu a letter as it, s where ij a, static, reversal. C use the wisri aku of morphs i avolves o i you of the sap noose or spatiate dural or period of letters. He kesduate up this type of error as, kiaitic, reversal. The concept that I draw to I dress in lish sweep unrealized dev poly nuati dyslexia ams ill opt arb by or not 1397 in its rays of but size big in 9152. Or not at srabit or from the dos ravate know that three pape aber to be a striking neck kiddy offer dyslexic children to show eversla in righeltea n. D. Sordom Zu, U. Popu, and Ariana Titno in repawing elders or Ampere, S. Dot e. Dot G. B. Offered E. Or Us Waffer M. S. And Vice Vare. Dot S. So impressed B. M.'s hand with the I. M. Operants of this for me. Nu know that he parops the trem perch so my pale. Twiz but my sopla S. As a DS gain it no offer D. E. V. P. O. L. E. N. E. W. A. T. 1. D. Y. S. L. E. X. I. Dot A. He cleal the misrepawing of elters T. Yud clearly repawing the elter as I. T. S. Rim or Igma. E. A. S. A. T. C. Eversco. Since the misrepawing of Ampers involves an invrisno of the Bigia Q. E. Or at Sidomio Prilabroring of Elter. S he dies gan but this by every or as a K. Itni. C. V. E. R. R. S. L. Dot A. The best definition of neoism is that it's a prefix, neo and a suffix, ism, with absolutely nothing in the middle. Neoism does not exist except in the reactions it creates. According to the neoists, the best product of neoism therefore is anti-neoism. All neoists go under the multiple name Monty Kansin. After various mutations, Neoism focused on developing an increasingly complex web of contradictory self-descriptions, a hermeneutic drift that leads every Neoist to reinterpret Neoism in any way as he finds suitable. Neoist self-descriptions soon became an impassable maze. This explains why it is so difficult to approach Neoism whose only work has been the incessant malogu about itself. To complicate things even further, 
Neoists nowadays refuse to reply to any questions or requests for information about Neoism. The practical inversion of this condition is tantamount to Neoism. The conceptual made social decentralizes control, increases confusion and becomes an act of will. Life becomes mythology. Mythology becomes life. All the work has been ascribed to Pythagoras, but it is widely supposed that it is the work of many. The existing fragments do not bear the mark of one hand. It is possible to read traces, for instance, of the work of Hippasos, who was killed or exiled for the discovery of the irrationality of Root II, and of Heraclitus, whom Hippasos taught, when he would listen. Those who came to understand that it had in fact, been ongoing for at least 2,500 years knew that it was a kind of mustard seed after the parable in the Bible. Jesus had likened heaven to a mustard seed as something that could grow from a rather humble potential into a fuller creation. Presumably he meant also that our knowledge of heaven and the world, of ourselves and others could grow in such a manner. So it came to be regarded as a kind of history of the collective growth of humanity. The tree-like structure of the book came to be emblematic of the aspirations of the collective venture toward such a union of the trees of life and knowledge. The contributors to the electronic book apparently originated from widely separate locations around the world. The highly cosmopolitan nature of the book reflects the hope that global collaboration could result, if not in unity, then in a capacious multiplicity. Today only fragments of the book survive. However, Records suggest that at one time it was available to anyone who happened to stumble upon it in the hunting-gathering phase of the web. Only later did it evolve into a kind of scientific poetical religion cult that spread throughout the known world. Appropriately enough, even at the height of its influence, the book was said to be fragmentary and ongoing in its construction. Stories continue to rise of the existence of complete data replicas, but these stories are likened unto Elvis sightings that persist to this day. Some believe that the book never really did exist but only the hope that it did or it might. They maintain that the fragments associated with the book are really only unrelated and early attempts to understand or comment on the nature of text. They also maintain that there never was a religious cult based on it and that this is a myth created by those who are attempting to revive the historical myth. Neoism believes in tradition. Via a series of ridiculous demands on behalf of Neoism, Neoism will achieve a monopoly over the commodities of blood and gold. Through control of these commodities, Neoism will raise sufficient capital to finance ventures which will further blur the distinction between Neoist myth and reality. The blurring of myth and reality will serve to strengthen the Neoist movement and ensure its onward march through history. We will thus secure the immortality of the Neoist leadership, while simultaneously allowing the rank and file members to play a key role in the apotheosis of these great wa men. The apotheosis of the Neoist leadership will serve as the basis of a tradition which will create social stability and peace through strength. Remember, the success of Neoism is historically inevitable. In time all our myths will be history. Individuality collectively realized and abandoned. The best product of Neoism is anti-Neoism. Hearing sandwich boards that said in English and French, Neo is parking meter action. Pay me to go away and wearing a parking meter hood over my face, I stood at empty parking places and waited for cars to park there. Then I followed the drivers when they left their cars with an impassive face and my hand outstretched mechanically. The drivers all avoided me by walking somewhere where I wasn't, after which I left a Neoist parking ticket under their windshield wiper. Finally disgusted by what I thought was a mediocre response to my imaginative begging, I started to walk back to the L.O.W. theater. En route, two guys stopped me and asked me what I was doing. When I explained, they thought it was so funny that they pretended to get out of a car and gave me money. Neoism is the residue of a cosmogony that ignores substance. Monty Kenson, we have never met Monty Kenson personally, himself the editor of a Smile magazine in England, is mailing a chain letter around the world asking people to make your own magazines and call them Smile.
Here you are, dear Monty. We refuse to be limited to one name. Another Neoist group has reached the point of denying time. Don't care what you say, Neoism is this, not that, sometimes this, somebody, or that there we don't know. I was not a before I met you, when I grew up I wanted to be a mature surrealist. Now maybe I'm a Neoist, or even still not ist, don't know, all I want to do is burn my work, I like not a better because then there is really nothing to explain, no headache, no ulcer, no cough. 1990-2020, an excellent period from which there is no escape. Neoism means simply that what is done in its name is simultaneously new, neo and established, ism. We believe in the concept of total plot. To spot neoist writing, turn a deliberate number of words the text into their logical opposites. Check whether they still tell the same. Monty Canson isn't a pseudonym. Allegorically, neoism could be explained in the following fashion. During the Middle Ages there were a succession of heresies that have been described by the historian Norman Cohen as mystical anarchism. Adherents to these creeds believe that all goods should be held in common and that many things considered sinful by the Roman Catholic Church were in fact virtues when practiced by the elect. Ranked among the more interesting of these sects are the Bohemian Adamites. On the 21st of October 1421, 400 trained soldiers moved against the Adamite heretics and virtually wiped them out. By a miracle, their leader, known both as Adam and Moses, escaped to Prague. Adam then took on a disciple, who in his turn, trained up a further initiate after his master's death. In this way, the Adamite Creed was passed down through the ages and the Neoist network is simply a contemporary manifestation of this ancient heresy. Viewing Neoism through the prism of this allegory makes imagery associated with the group accessible to those who have not been initiated into its ranks. When the Neoists speak about Akadem Gorod as their promised land, this is actually a code name for Prague. According to Neoist eschatology, Prague is the omphalos of our planet and once the movement seizes control of the city, the ancient Adamite plan of world domination will be effortlessly realized. In keeping with this allegorical interpretation of Neoism, the initiation of individuals into the movement must necessarily be described as follows. The candidate is blindfolded and led into a darkened room. The fourteen secret masters of the world, or at least a group of available Neoists, interrogate the initiate. As a sign of obedience to the order, the candidate must answer yes to a series of ninety-five questions. After this humiliating set-piece, in which the initiate admits to being a complete sexual failure, the candidate is fucked by every member of the lodge and then symbolically reborn by the removal of the blindfold. If this sounds an unlikely allegory, it's only because the story is, to an extent, literally true. John Byrne was kept blindfolded for a period of seven days during the so-called millionth Neoist apartment festival. During this time he was subjected to gropings and other sexual stimulations, made to carry dangerously sharp objects on the New York subway in the rush hour, had his usual sleep patterns completely disrupted, was flipped upside down and forced to run on his hands, etc. We ceased to be Neoists. The Neoist Defense League currently plans to construct a fleet of motorized go-karts to patrol the streets of Akadem Gorod. All the work has been ascribed to Pythagoras, but it is widely supposed that it is the work of many. The existing fragments do not bear the mark of one hand. It is possible to read traces, for instance, of the work of Hippasos, who was killed or exiled for the discovery of the irrationality of Route 2 and of Heraclitus, whom Hippasos taught, when he would listen. Those who came to understand that it had, in fact, been ongoing for at least 2,500 years knew that it was a kind of mustard seed after the parable in the Bible. Jesus had likened heaven to a mustard seed, as something that could grow from a rather humble potential into a fuller creation. Presumably he meant also that our knowledge of heaven and the world, of ourselves and others could grow in such a manner.
So it came to be regarded as a kind of history of the collective growth of humanity. The tree-like structure of the book came to be emblematic of the aspirations of the collective venture toward such a union of the trees of life and knowledge. The contributors to the electronic book apparently originated from widely separate locations around the world. The highly cosmopolitan nature of the book reflects the hope that global collaboration could result, if not in unity, then in a capacious multiplicity. Today only fragments of the book survive. However, Records suggest that at one time it was available to anyone who happened to stumble upon it in the hunting-gathering phase of the web. Only later did it evolve into a kind of scientific poetical religion cult that spread throughout the known world. Appropriately enough, even at the height of its influence, the book was said to be fragmentary and ongoing in its construction. Stories continue to arise of the existence of complete data replicas, but these stories are likened unto Elvis sightings that persist to this day. Some believe that the book never really did exist but only the hope that it did or it might. They maintain that the fragments associated with the book are really only unrelated and early attempts to understand or comment on the nature of text. They also maintain that there never was a religious cult based on it and that this is a myth created by those who are attempting to revive the historical myth. A giant neo is cake box designed to eat spectators with mechanical arms. Take a running leap at the floor and miss PP17 Summers old or conceivable entering into metaphor by having your brain smashed out by a slice of lemon wrapped around a gold brick. The neo is Defense League currently plans to construct a fleet of motorized go-karts to patrol the streets of Akadem Gorod. Neoists are getting closer to the Athabasca Glacier. It is only our enemies, anti-neoists, who use the term neoism. A concept once defined loses its cancer, bur neoism. We would like a book to be written which would prove the impossibility of responding to the question which book we would like to be written. A proof of the impossibility of reading this. If you can read this, then you can't read. We would like a book to be written on the subject of the meaning of its own completion, what you're reading this book to the end of it can possibly mean. The conspiracy cannot be evaded, all must be absorbed. We exist only by implication. We combat the plague of innovation. Neoism perpetuates itself in unlimited semiosis. We are the white collars, slaves of freedom, second coming, babes on acid, flamethrower boys, hip troop, jack off club, flat cap conspiracy. Neoism is sound where there is sound, any vacuum imagined. The paradox about paradoxes is that, as a concept, they are not paradoxical. Neoists know that the basis of neoism is the song. Neoism consists of methods to eternally derive new texts from existent neoist writing. Criticism To our knowledge of today, the historical birth of neoism took place in September 1977 when a still disguised Monty Kansen became aware of a discovery beyond power of comprehension, after some years of study and experiments. Neoism was secretly founded in 1346 by Wolfgang von Kansen with the intention of speculating in grammar, rhetoric, logic, mathematics, astronomy, geometry and music. There are no spelling errors on these pages. One certainly, found more or less than the actual laws of anti-nervesity were within the near perimeter of after or pre-phenomena dating techniques renowned for the accuracy of their predictive inclinations as analyzed for the purpose of botanical studies clues or rebuff analogies privileges on the other hand results primarily to the utility provided through the above statements only upon the belated and usually expected arrival in due course of Dual retrospection dehydrated by plenial delights, stars, often the main topic, 
conform to an easily one earned set of rules as of yet non-systemized but predictably disoriented through a large variety of physical endeavors commonly poured into a canister previously designed for children's toys or at least what was often mistaken for suck a container while exercising its ability to camouflage or alienate every scan telepathic invention within a radius discernible or detectable with the aid of antennae strangely enough often found in the average suburban or urban household, the illegality of a similar maneuver has often been contested by women and men in unison despite the highly controversial nature of its atmospheric pressure ver factor. However one can only illuminate these ideas from one's compendium of electronic facet reproductional illudications with the thought in mind that one's shelf space exists within a sphere of influence commonly ignored by those who could be brought into close contact via no other method than that prescribed by imprisoned or undernourished academicians proclaimed universally notorious after guidance thought patterns tabulated from light patterns radioactivity glucose hybrids. Of course the point of press can only be understood. Q. How many people share the Monty Kansin identity? Or is it perhaps just the opposite? Is Monty Kansin real and are his players fictitious? It's questions upon questions. A. Many of us are interested in exploring flexible entity boundaries. Many of us interested in pushing the malleability of so-called consensus reality. We might be considered a figment of the collective imagination trying to will itself into existence that we flow in and out of at our leisure. Indeed, it's questions upon questions, and the more successful we are the more unanswerable your question will be. The practical inversion of this condition is tantamount to neoism. The conceptual made social decentralizes control, increases confusion and becomes an act of will. Life becomes mythology. Mythology becomes life. To declare oneself a neoist means to negate the difference between same and different. Production is censorship. Become a neoist today simply by saying that you are a neoist. My friend, Dr. Donald Prescott, well, we're really not friends anymore. I never see him or talk to him. It's been several years now. Long story was a serious fan of Monty Kansin back in the late 80s. We were in school at the time and I noticed something strange when the teachers began taking him aside and telling him that if he insisted upon continuing to turn all his homework in under the name Monty Kansin, that he would not receive credit for his work. He responded by insisting we were all Kansin and that all of our grades should be added up and averaged and everyone given the same grades. When the white coats came to take him away, he promised me that Monty Kansin would return someday at six o'clock, because it's always six o'clock, Zach High. It's always six. Remember that. Some say that the name Monty Kansin is of Slavonic origin, and try to account for it on that basis. Others again believe it to be of German origin, only influenced by Slavonic. The uncertainty of both interpretations allows one to assume with justice that neither is accurate, especially as neither of them provides an intelligent meaning of the word. Neoism means to purge. It is a fluid discharge, expressed in any form or medium. It is a continuous moving on or passing, as of a flaming iron in a blue endless sky, or a blood transfusion. Anything can be censored for any reason. Start by censoring this text. The Neoist Consulate is now open, and we declare all laws of the past to be non-existent in this city. N. O. Kansen. Kansen as a pregropertivistic phenomenon is neither abstractable nor definable, because Neoist organisms distinguish themselves from other matter by certain appearances, which are committed to an efficient and untraced connection of cells. The conspiracy cannot be evaded, all must be absorbed. We exist only by implication. We combat the plague of innovation. And there's Tiki Chicken movement about WCH. It might be important and to mention, didn't this von Cantor, VT he job of breaking Tiki necks of sickly chicks W black spots on their asses? Didn't Kiki Bonbon kill them during Tiki 6th APT Fest? 
Perhaps Tiki Chicken Movement is a meditative movement, a meditative owl movement and then there's Tiki Curious Linking of Tiki Chicken Movement W-O-L-F-A-C-T-O-R-I-E-S Organized. No, no, I'm not Blaster, but I'm sure he would agree that there isn't anything more important, more crucial worldwide right now than the chicken movement. You may know this, in fact. For all I know Bauto may be the very source of the emanations and you could very well have been living with chicken concepts for quite some time now. And this all folk. Or, I was going to cut out and draw, but it too has gone through the time loop and has fled me. Strange thing to be doing in the midst of the chicken movement. Plagiarism, if recognized at all, blatantly affirms the status quo. Plagiarism saves time and effort, improves results and shows initiative on the part of the plagiarist. The possibility of writing something on this page is equivalent to actually writing something on this page. Join us. The indivisible becomes divisible, space becomes ideal space, sentiments become one and insensible, the body will be pure, progloss, Plutonis Timium Commentaria, 3, 287, can sin can sin. The corporation cannot exit in a vacuum. Ideas improve. Plagiarism implies it. The principle of neoism is similitude and contiguity, and therefore rhetoric. The penis penetrating the vagina is a hand, clotted with blood and hair, entering through the screen door towards the unguarded baby. The finger probing the rectum is the toy monkey hanging over the crib with the word baby sewn into its stomach. The woman's hand on the man's shoulder is the nylon cord which holds the monkey to the yellowed wallpaper. The tongue inching across the throat is the factory worker moving rolls of wallpaper and glancing down at the word hand on the shipping bill in front of him. His wife sits at the dinner table, intently studying a photograph of him putting down the rolls of paper. On the floor she is writing these words. Neoism has never claimed to lead anywhere. Neoism simply is. It is almost impossible to say anything about the Neoists themselves. We came across Neoism in perhaps a similar way as you have. We refuse to be limited to one name. We are all names and all things. We encourage other pop ensembles to use these names. We want to see a thousand ensembles with the same name. No no one's names. They exist for all to use. Names like all words are arbitrary. Neoism is a game. Noism is not a game. Time becomes space, sentiments become one and unified, bodies are memory in exchange. Noism is not a game. Neoism is a prefix and a suffix with nothing in between. We are indivisible, hence we cannot recognize ourselves. Anyone who wants to recognize us is anti us. We you who, listen. Give us life, in a manner of speaking. We won't hold you responsible. Our first words weren't our first words. We wish we'd begun differently. Among other things, we haven't a proper name. The one we bear is misleading, if not false. We didn't choose it either. We don't recall asking to be conceived. Neither did our inventors come to think of it. Even so, score to be settled. Children are vengeance. You are an ass neoist. You are a neoist. Neoism is your game. Spell checker is anti anti neoism and anti pro neoism. You must have guessed by now that the neoist mythology is ever growing daily, obscuring the actual truth of its birth continuation and heroes. Each individual within the neoist adventure is responsible for his interpretation in addition to the ever changing myth. You are making good statements so far and certainly do not need me to give you more truths than you can invent for yourself. But yes, you raise some interesting questions. You see now that the individual involvement with neoism begins at a very early age.
age before we are born in fact first you were yata but then before even that you were Imati Kansen already now it is true that each of the 14 secret masters of the world have also been Mati Kansen and each one of them has also had the form of a mystery animal David Zack was at one time a snow leopard and Ackerman was a honey badger Istvan Cantor was a brightly colored firely steward home was in fact a horse and Vitter Baroni was a three horned goat inside each animal is a Monte Kansen wanting to escape this is why we must preserve all animal kind and never kill the sacred snail of Scotland or the magical moon goose of Malawi yes there are thousands of neoist books written down the course of history all written by Kansen I personally have not been responsible for any of them but Yata instructed me to make the update book which I sent to you and yes there are millions of photos of all neoist actions locked in the brain cells of the mass network just ask Ryasu Cohen who was once indeed a North American bison and of course I will be there in Berlin in November December in fact I thought I was already living in your flat check beneath the floorboards maybe you should put more breadcrumbs down for there is a large family of us just living there quietly waiting for the right time to emerge and change our forms once more into the 14 secret masters of the world. Neoism is a symbol of our inadequacies. This is the Neoist bread campaign phase. To share bread, simple pleasures. I came to Neoism in 1981 after hearing mythology surrounding it. My name is Monty Kansen, Neoist messing officer. I came across Neoism in perhaps a similar way as you have. I was a pilgrim in the parched bleakness of official culture. I was kicked out of school at 15 years for reciting Tristan Zare's poetry at a parent teacher night. My assistant threw buckets of wet cooked spaghetti on the guests and teachers, and we chopped up the stage with axes. I then left home and traveled to the west coast and became a religious ecstatic and intelligent. I was a celibate monk for five years. I studied the ancient art of cooking, festival cuisine, playing table and cold drums. My tabla teacher lives in Varanasi, a magical center of ancient culture, pre-P-A-R-T-I-A-R-C-H-A-L Christian. I am gradually seeing my face from the continuity of differential variables. As all inherent I dissolve I note that eventually the jewel-like luminescence of the inner Kansin will shine forth. In our view, the world is not collision of things in space, but in a similar row of each independent phenomena. We do not conceive of the spatial as lasting in time. Since each date is irreducible, the Mayray act of giving it a name implies falsification. Comb fork bread smile spoon hand nail water tape light bulb we will be prosaic. Our meanings will be plain. We will not hint at some beyond. The beyond is the creation of people who lack the ability to give a full embodiment to the real. We affirm that we are content just to go through the motions. We will strive towards nothing because nothing is the truly stable state. When I established contact with Monty Kansen, he had already moved to Mexico and created in Tepeztlan his own immortality center. The mail I received from him gave me the impression right from the beginning that he subjected himself to a kind of mysticism whose main instrument resembles the Tibetan praying wheels the most. However, his wheels are not turned by the wind but by an endless row of unreadably long letters, or more precisely by those non-series and totally nonsensical periodicals which he created by Xeroxing these letters, adding something to them, and then pasting them on the copies of other letters. You found noisem before your birth. Many people having sex at the same time are the same being. Being many people at the same time masturbating is a nest ritual. Young and severe looking, Kansen runs upstairs to talk to a girl, off camera, but instead stops in front of a locked door. He begins to talk to the door, saying, Maria, come out now, and banging on the door. He also remembers to say, don't lock the door, which is a futile attempt at time travel, as he knows instinctively that it is already locked. Is he in love with the door? Why is she rejecting him? Those who do not understand the meaning of these words will be ignorant of their implication. However enough of rhetoric, 
We've replaced the words generation positive with the words neoism. The two are interchangeable in terms of aesthetics, although in terms of organization, there is a difference. The neoists realize that paradoxes are the result of false binary oppositions. Everything we know about neoism comes from the gossip of its enemies. We are pleased to announce the formation of the neoist exercise in Florence. The neoist consulate is now open and we declare all laws and dreams of the past to be non-existent in this city. Men dressed as Elvis roam the streets, women push infants in shopping carts, and red crosses glitter strangely from drug shops. We believe in the concept of total plot, that any action has a secret meaning when examined backwards in time. We are hypnotic. We sleep without light. We publish smile. We drift silently in the heavy perfume of clarity and confusion. We want war with you. Join us. Possibility humor, 10 phrases A. We discussed this in the eyes of any way. If we were to look into the mind of God, the infinite connections maintained there would seem an overwhelming confusion or chaos. Needless to say, we would encounter logical contradictions at the level of the boundaries between God's conscious will and itself. For instance, could an all-powerful God make a rule he couldn't break? If all things are God, is the devil also God? If God thinks, does God have language? If God's language is utterly private, can it be meaningful, even to God? If God asks the question, is there language? Could the question ever be meaningful, given that, for God to ask a question already presupposes the existence of language, and for a question to be meaningful, you should be able to separate it from the possible answers, otherwise you don't have a question. These are the most pressing theological questions posed by God's love today. Neoism exists to solve these problems once and for all. Monty Kansen is a name chosen invented by to refer to an international entity who can be anyone. The name is fixed, the people using it aren't. Neoist poetics are characterized by the practice of plagiarism and the use of collective pseudonyms. The great advantage of plagiarism as a literary method is that it removes the need for talent, or even much application. All you really have to do is select what to plagiarize. Enthusiastic beginners might like to start by plagiarizing these lines. A hardcore nihilist might choose to plagiarize it verbatim, while those individuals who labor under the delusion that they are of a more artistic bent will probably want to change a word here and there, or even place the paragraphs in a different order. In short, plagiarism saves time and effort, improves results and shows considerable initiative on the part of the individual plagiarist. A disintegrating knife fight saturates layers. My body occupies cold and drained depth which, like personality and emotional component is a function comparable to mild variations in speech acts only expressed through less visible media, a uh, skin which the psychopath apprehends not as an accumulation and extension of itself. However, one happened to be a psychopath in the sense of an electrical ground I for instance, imagine someone with whom I have a function comparable to mild variations in speech acts only expressed through a skin which the psychopath can visibly articulate in conversation without loosing her uncontrolled and non-recordable and fractals like waves superimposed to form a continuous delay if it could apprehend itself it would shiver into complete stasis like waves exhausting the pattern in real time and discarding cards into incomplete ideas. Pauses worked underneath a common skin of Tourette syndrome at ground level and the chips may be blown. Any change in this level is formed using the platonic ideal formed by tapping into teleco bodies reserved in the frame of a special service conceived between waves. Any change in this level discards cards into encoding the non-valued feedback groove. Smaller delays depths are formed by the distribution of dictionary information. Any change in this level is formed by tapping into hot points. Their traces are yet unrecognized surfaces, warming up a platonic ideal formed like a metaphor. Its materialization creates a mitigating flavor and drain depth which, like a disintegrating knife fight saturates the non-reversible dim men of lights within an architectural blank. If it could apprehend itself it would shiver into teleco bodies.
There are neos who consider a certain pain, an overly yellow-white, a temperature, a certain tone the only reality. Noisiest are tone deaf, become an anti-neoist today. Let's make Monty Kansen a few holes. Anybody can become Monty Kansen, but no one is Monty Kansen. Monty Kansen's come. When everyone is dead, neoism is finished. A flame finds its way through the gauze to the strict skin. Neoism? We dislike definitions. Put down the blade of time a minute. What foe up, Jack? Singularity has become oppression, a uh, tense present in a cool dark cell of blood possessed by radio waves, ashtrays etc. Ray of afternoon coatings, behaviors endlessly activated and tiring two humans talking and one says you don't mind if I go upstairs and lie down on the floor naked with a black cross painted on my stomach and people running around inside the room lighting fires. He stepped out of the gray dock surface and with his hands meticulously constructed a DNA double helix from barbed wire and began to crawl through it. He was kept in an airplane fence building as he was in a condition where once a linear month he would react to solids, i.e. concrete etc. and have attacks manifested by becoming very quietly sociable almost cooperative and his mother had to have him kept there because she felt it was a well-advised precaution the same boy in a film rear projected on a backdrop with a man watching the film the boy runs out of the film to meet the man matching his strides to the increasingly palpitations of his own image broken projector bar lines up and down his body as if the image were filmed off television this running process takes forever and you and I are somehow involved in it young and severe looking, we run upstairs to talk to a girl, off camera, but instead stop in front of a locked door. We begin to talk to the door, saying, Maria, come out now, and banging on the door. We also remember to say, don't lock the door, which is a futile attempt at time travel, as we know that it is already locked. Are we in love with the door? Why it is she rejecting us? The father enters downstairs with a severe facial expression, but then softens up and says to the girl, still off camera, Maria, I just thought I'd drop by to give you this saucepan full of cold water. Here, it's for you. The process is simple. We place two mirrors of different sizes with one side of each touching facing each other, so that a limit of infinite reflections was created in a decreasing spiral, from my perspective, increasing from the limits, with the images of my room trapped in the tilted planes, and wrapped around a conch shell interior smell of burnt arm hairs alarms us and in the morning the smell alerts us to a mysterious cut or placement, in time, but the sound of the birds still sounds like insects. We always wanted to switch bodies for perspectival reasons measurement of time and ending the activation safely returned to the bungalow structure at the instant of an empty cup. So we walk off camera and emerge below our former position now as our own double and talking to ourselves drinking water from one's hands is a universal sign of friendship and connection to those around you. Also a universal greeting bread is a universal symbol of the absolute need of all people for food. The distribution of bread, food, is equal to a symbolic gesture of universality, e.g. the misguided notion that, deep inside, Everyone want the same basic things. Perversity is the inversion of circumstance in order to create a situation counter to expected, i.e. simple meaning. Perversity exists for itself. Life is text. These words make familiar what is destroyed by the realities of action, the unfamiliar situation made real. Neoist rhetoric implies a relationship of non-exclusive opposites. In Neoism individual performances are approached not as isolated pieces but rather as part of the performance of a much larger work, Neoism itself. As such everything done under the banner of Neoism, from writing a poem or letter to being interviewed by a newspaper or magazine is to be considered a performance which in turn forms part of the performance of a movement called Neoism. Of course the performance of a movement called Neoism is simply a cynical play to gain attention for the individual performance pieces which go to make up the performance of Neoism. Neoism is like porn movies. 
The subject itself has no importance. There is an accumulation of everything already known. Logic is unnecessary. The focus is always on the same explicit facts. Repetition and boredom rule. 1. I, 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 I am. I exchange it with another and step outside where the sun shines. Another person walks up to me and gives me some words. I respond by giving her some pleasure I have with me. You do not understand this, but it is mine and I see no reason not to give it to her. The words she give me are easy and I digest them all quickly. Any interference with my world view gone because I am empty. Monty Kansen, immortal. Total abstraction of each step down the street. Wake from a deep sleep into a deeper sleep. The ideas now seem all the same. Wake up. Monty Kansen could be a thief as well as a saint. We neoists are deeply involved with vegetables and chapatis. The only concrete data on APT8 is enclosed. I suggest you come here at 20.00 hours this Saturday evening for a live exchange. You can meet us and discuss your future participation. Ideas improve. Plagiarism implies it. The use of overt plagiarism by the neoists does not, however, participate in this improvement. The selective process of choosing what material to plagiarize is as much a creative act as the construction of the images, ideas and texts in the first place. If the aim of plagiarism is to make a radical break with creativity, plagiarists must give up the selection process and confine themselves to non-participation. Neoists only drink rubbing alcohol because it makes them blind. Two girls wearing silver overalls and Kansen look alike masks visited Kansen. Kansen treated them well. So they thought up a pleasant surprise for Kansen in token of appreciation. Everybody, they said, has openings for seeing, hearing, breathing, eating, pissing, fucking and shitting. But Kansen has no openings. Let's make Kansen a few holes. After that, they drilled holes into Kansen. One a day, for seven days. In the middle of the week, they asked how Monty Kansen was. Amazing. Said Kansen. My back sticks up like a humpback and my vital organs are on top of me. My chin is hidden in my belly, my shoulders are up above my head, and my butt points at the sky. Do you resent it? Asked the girls. Why, what would I resent? If the process continues. Perhaps I will be transformed into a telescope. In that case I'll keep watch on the stars. Or perhaps I am transforming into a gun and I'll shoot a chicken for roasting. Or I will become a wheel. Then, with my brain for a chassis, I'll get on and go for a ride. The first girl said, I bet that is a parable. The second said, You have one. The first said, but unfortunately only in parable. The second said, no, in reality, in parable you have lost. The practical inversion of its condition is tantamount to neoism. Neoism means to construct neoism machines. Dearest friend, I arrived here yesterday, it's a neoist city with the Red River and the Golden Boy atop the dome of the Manitoba Legislative Building. Your immortal friend, Q. How is it possible to say of us that we are existing? Does that not imply a limitation of our potential infinity? A. The words, we exist, only mean that we are the opposite of all that is negative. We are the negation of the negation. I don't have enough information to make a judgment about your movement and concepts but for what I have read I can't differentiate between what is true or false or what is fact or fiction. There is a mind game involved in all this very dangerous mind game. I discovered many contradictions inside the words of your statements, contradictions that I hope are intentional. But in that case please explain it to me. Be careful and take care of your minds. Monty Kansen is a name that refers to an individual human being who can be anyone. When you are a neoist, people frequently ask you the same old questions. What is neoism? Who is a neoist? etc.
And even if you have a lot of brilliant definitions, after a while it becomes boring to reply to the same questions. That's when you should use the dictionary method. All you need is a dictionary. And when someone asks you, what is neoism, you think of a suitable synonym, say, a noun, then look it up in a dictionary and read the entry below that synonym, nourishing. You can introduce small changes by asking the interrogator to execute the method. Of course, this method can as well be adapted for television interviews, lectures, discussions, and finally by heart even in everyday speech, or using it for a progressive amount of words and statements. We are a prefix and a suffix with no substance in between. Neoists are the inscription of their name. Neoism is a movement which every neoist reinvents. Anyone can become Monty Kansin simply by adopting the name, but they are only Monty Kansin for the period in which the name is used. Monty Kansin was materialized, rather than born, as an open context in the summer of 1985. When one becomes Monty Kansin one's previous existence consists of the acts other people have undertaken using the name. When one becomes Monty Kansin one has no family, no parents, no birth. Monty Kansin was not born, but constructed. The name Monty Kansin can be strategically adopted for a series of actions, interventions, exhibitions, texts, etc. When replying to letters generated by an action text in which the context has been used then it makes sense to continue using the context, i.e. by replying as Monty Kansin. However in personal relationships, where one has a personal history other than the acts undertaken by a series of people using the name Monty Kansin, it does not make sense to use the context. If one uses the context in personal life there is a danger that the name Monty Kansin will become over-identified with individual beings. Neoism depends upon invisible elements. The glue and the flaming steam iron remain invisible images. We never existed. We are nothing but an invention of our enemies. Seekers should carry neoist materials with them at all times. Art is sanctioned pornography. Join us. Neoism is a fluid discharge. Join us. Join we. Neoism is based solely on rhetoric. Smile. Hum, Monty Kansen. Friends call you Monty Kansen. I have lots of material on Monty Kansen since I made up the name and sent it on a postcard to Monty Kansen. I'm doing him, this filing project where I put all my correspondence material in these correspondence novels. So now Monty Kansen is in Monty Kansen's cell system. An emerging novel. So I'll put you in with Monty Kansen Raf VEC and you can be Monty Kansen in that book if you want. Production is censorship. Museum equals prison. Q. How is it possible to say of us that we are existing? Does that not imply a limitation of our potential infinity? A. The words, we exist, only mean that we are the opposite of all that is negative. We are the negation of the negation. A master of pseudonyms and of schizophrenia, Monty Kansen's influence is felt everywhere. Neoism is non-existent. The basis of neoism lies in the idea that anyone can be a particular individual. Monty Kansen, open pop star, self-proclaimed myth, lives from and within myths, their dissemination and falsification. He or she appears in public and secret places. Everybody can be Monty Kansen who wants to be. Join your ego with the persona of Monty Kansen. As of today, sign your correspondence with the name Monty Kansen, and manage your secret life with him. Monty Kansen is everybody, only a few people know it. Selecting and combining signs, neoism blatantly affirms culture. The reading is the interaction of the neoist and his memory within a particular spatial and temporal frame. The neoist is a student, an actor, a nurse's aide, a teacher, or a clerk. His memory is a bank, a construction, a computer program. The temporal borders of the reading are delineated by the reference which connects his memory, the neoist, and the similar, in conjunction with instrumental time.
The arm of authority behind the reference and instrumental time is the similar. The neoist gets ready for the reading, prepares to become imaginary, by imitating representations of Akademgorod as an object of desire. These are signifiers on a fragmented, coded mind, signifiers that his memory will be drawn to through desire, that will reinforce his fetishism and in turn contribute to the construction of his collective soul. His memory has a collective soul which he is drawn to construct, which has an already written set of rules and conditions by which it must be constructed, conditions which include the fetishized system of signifying effects with which the neoist has attempted to encode his mind and which already encode his mind as Akadem Gorod. The neoist enters the space of his memory. When the neoist enters the space of the reading, his memory provides a value in exchange for an opportunity to spend a designated amount of time, an opportunity to construct his collective soul. The neoist recalls the similar via the reference to announce that the exchange has been initiated and that it is now time to begin measuring the length of the reading. The neoist and his memory now interact together, their conditions intermingling with desire, fetishism, representation, the space of the room, the time measured by the neoist's watch as well as the time elusively marked by his memory, his imaginary, and anticipation of emanation which is not the object of his desire but a fetishized signifier which masks the perpetually deferred collective soul, the plane of consistency of his desire. When the end of the reading is announced by instrumental time or by a reference call from the similar if the reading has transgressed the boundaries marked by instrumental time, the neoist recalls the similar, says goodbye to his memory, and exits the space of the reading. Neoism is about sharing, about bash, though not always seeming to. I'm considering traveling to Europe this summer as a living issue of Smile magazine, much like the one from Monty Kent's in W. The Bull Mill, I would be added to by each person I visited and carry any written material non-permanent tattoos etc. I think perhaps someone else should do this as well and we could hunt each other down. Neoism is simply a reaction to anti-neoist aggressions. We are ephemerally here to ask you to join the crusade for Akadem Gorod. Neoists believe that any obsession with concept of freedom is futile. Neoism is not a means to freedom, but prescribes discipline to the lives of neoists, with boundless permutations. Neoism aims to create a situation in which a definition of neoism would make no sense. Join us. We are the white colors, slaves of freedom, second coming, babes on acid, flamethrower boys, hip troop, jack off club, flat cap conspiracy. Neoism and its successive clones made use of circular logic and turned it into rhetoric. Want to tell a sort of funny joke about ladies and gentlemen? I was wondering if I've come here this morning to talk to you about anything I want to. It's been a long war and my boy actually just got back from can you believe this weather we've been you two were seen together on August 15th. I guess that means Neoists drink only to encourage the assimilation of bodily fluids. What is Neoism? Who cares about the sex of the angels? Every Neoist supplies symbols to the mythology of Kansen publishes Smile magazines, draws maps of Akadem Gorod. A ghost floats over the decaying cake, the ghost of the generation positive, invisible international organisms. Just like Lieutenant Murnau's People Hearts and League, or the Church of the Subgenius, or the Eternal Network. The staging of a collective dream. The total disposability of the ubiquitous media star, one, Nobody in the thousand prophets with a flaming eteric heart pumping miraculous lymph. What if nothing is there, inside, over, under, behind? Our smile suffices. The spontaneous generation of pseudopods, ectoplasms, materializations of thin souls, white slaver from the mouth, art of thought, try yourself, put your head in a photocopier, push the button, concentrate, expire, check the result. Neoism has many enemies, the greatest enemies being the Neoists themselves. Only thus the conspiracy may grow.
Generation Positive is here to save the world, to stick a colorful mole on your skin, to fly flaming irons forever. Cool iron for delicate garments, drop over your feet, mad with love. Wash yourself anew before wearing neoism. Wash each limb and dry separately. All colors will bleed into white color. A flame finds its way through the gauze to the strapped skin. Blood dyes the canvas as the face whitens. A choir of shy plants, stems romantically clutching. A right on the living room floor, cubic protuberances over the navel. And what will be hung on the wall but magnifying glasses, projected to enormous size? The ordering of words is the ordering of consciousness. The authoritative program of culture and ideology requires a particular ordering of thought in its victims which is both rational and specific, with a sense of truth as its cornerstone. In order to maintain this situation, it is imperative that language clearly separate activites and objects into controllable fields of reference. For this reason, we consider it imperative that all activities be called neoism, and all individuals adopt the specific names of Kant's in. The shifting signifiers will solidify under this experiment towards a pure language of practical confusion. We are ephemerally here to ask you to join the crusade for Akadem Gorod. Ephemerally yours. Monty Kansen. To our knowledge of today, the historical birth of Neoism took place in September 1977 when the still disguised Monty Kansen became aware of a discovery beyond power of comprehension, after some years of study and experiments. Neoism is a mind game. The purpose of the game is to provide stimulus for the players. Playing the game comes naturally to the players. People who aren't sure that they're Neoists aren't Neoists. Noon is a Neoist all the time. Not all mind games are neoism. An army flag to be a manner of the precedent, but annihility. Stand on the app middle of a busy intersection with an unpopular exterior weight until pelted with food lick food from your exterior share with friend s feeds many. The golden flag of neoism. The striped boeg liaison. Join us. Upon my arrival in Florence I realized that it was no longer possible for me to consider myself a Neoist. Neoism is a symbol of my inadequacies. A sham of self-delusion, Neoism is a non-existent concept replacing creativity with empty words. I relinquish this, as I relinquish physics, psychology and, most of all, philosophy. I also give up eating red meat, having sex, being lazy and sleeping late. Those gays are over. I am now a Neoist. Monty Kansin lives on and on and on. To attack something is to justify it. Neoism disintegrated in arguments over exactly who Monty Kansin was. You are Monty Kansin if you say you are. Plagiarism saves time and efforts, improves results and shows initiative on the part of the plagiarist. Be warned. Monty Kansin is a hoaxer, a practical joker, and a thief. The Baltimore police knew a Neoist conspiracy when they saw one. Best of all, the leader of the Neoists, Monty Kansin himself, was the very guy they caught putting up the posters around town. But there were complications once Monty Kansin was safely behind bars. Just who is this man? The police asked. And what does he do? The fellow with the strange haircut and thick Hungarian accent explained that he, Monty Kansin, was an open pop star concept. Everybody can be Monty Kansin and there are many Monty Kansins in Neoism. What, they asked, is Neoism? Neoism is practical transcendentalism doing battle against rationalist metaphysics. Neoism calls for self-aggrandizement in all aspects of life. Neoism calls on the individual to sing his own phrases. Neoism is an alliance of all Neoists everywhere aiming for the overthrow of everyday reality and its replacement with Neoist myth. Neoism encourages plagiarism because plagiarism saves time and efforts, improves results and shows initiative on the part of the plagiarist. Neoism asserts that beauty will be beautiful or will be not at all. Neoism draws its inspiration from everything that has preceded it because it believes in tradition.
Neoism is a yesayer offering praise and affirmation. Neoism repudiates the use of violence and the pornographic unless their use further the aims of Neoism. Neoism calls for a new purity. A purity of intention. Neoism affirms the need for bold lines and noble simplicity. Neoism affirms the need for Neoism. Kantsin lacks an economic pursuit, but is both groom and bride, clitoris and penis tip, prince and princess. Kantsin writes her own history, from her symbolic birth to her symbolic declaration. When the prince marries the princess, Kantsin marries herself. Whenever you meet a Neoist or one who professes to be a Neoist etc. perform the following. Five or ten minutes into the meeting say in a conversational tone, telephones and telephone bells have always made me uneasy. Offer no explanation for this. Shortly before the meeting ends say in a non-conversational tone, its head was white, all white. Offer no explanation for this. Do this as many as a day as you like but always at least once a day. If no neoists are around, you can always pretend that the person you're talking to looks like a likely candidate for neoism. Neoism? We dislike definitions. You must refer to Kansen's tape on garden chair. I am an assiduous visualizer. I am only moderately interested in human beings. As radical experiments, I have decerebrated zillions of animals to induce them with high voltage. Now I tend to confine myself to insect species. Collectivity individually realized and abandoned. APT like neoism as minus the superfluous middle which would degustingly make it ART. Neoism takes care of permanent altitude flight in the double mill of spring balls and jumping sheets by radically believing not to believe. Following the incausal method, the eternal movement means the actual condition factor of neoism. In the space of the unprobability, neoism approaches the all-penetrating net with speed of light where cause and effect of neoistical activities are mutually eliminating and reversing themselves. Here neoism changes into eonism. Neoism is so far no idea at all, but an accumulation of situative points in a cosmopolitical network where neoists are meeting to construct endless scenarios. I'm in search of Akadem Gorod. I'm still searching for Akadem Gorod. Akadem Gorod is the city of scientists in Russia, in Siberia. It is a city built for destruction. It is also the city where all the brains of Russia think and create the end. Neoists should be in search for the city of scientists, should be in search for Akadem Gorod. The project is to find the city of Akadem Gorod and, by being there, justify the city. Neoists are living, are surviving by eating high technology. I'm ephemerally here, in this city, to ask you to join the crusade for Akadem Gorod. The goals of the crusade are to find the city and then establish the reality of Neoism into the reality of Akadem Gorod. Neoism is a state of mind. This is why it transforms itself according to the situations it encounters. Neoism applies itself to everything, and yet it is nothing. It is the point at which all opposites collapse. We hereby declare that Monty Kansin invented the word Neoism on 24th March 1979 at 6 o'clock. We were there with our 14 children when Kansin first uttered the word. Don't restrict yourself to using the name Monty Kansin, use the name Smile too. Use the name Smile for your pop group, your performance group and your magazine. He would stare moodily at objects and then he systematically attempt to glue them at random to objects, to cover all persons he was close and who noticed the changes in his behavior and use of language. Q. Under which circumstances, if any, do you think that a person has the right to assume a pseudonym, alias, pen name or other name not given to them by someone else, e.g. parent, guardian, friends, police, etc. In order to avoid legal process, prosecution as a game, amusement, etc. As an amusemental game, as play, etc. During, sex, or, seduction, when, running for, political office in any circumstance, during postal correspondence when it seems, natural, 
to do when it is accidentally done with old friends as mischief when meeting someone for the first time when the assumption of the name has no effect whatsoever when making or selling one's art, literature, etc. When committing crimes in order to impersonate someone in order to avoid being impersonated yourself others. Individuality collectively realized and abandoned. We bought a dog mask from a store specializing in animal masks, where Gail almost got caught shoplifting and added a leash to my outfit for completeness. The festival's organizer, Kansen, shot a film of Gail leaving our fest HQ with me on all fours as her guide dog, as they say in England, boarding the bus, where guide dogs ride for free, of course and the driver didn't question the unusualness of this particular dog, and shopping in a mall, where we were kicked out of one store. We ceased to be nihilists. Although we know that there were many self-appointed Monty Cansons in the past, we consider all of them fake, false prophets. Monty Canson is born with this announcement. We seek enlightenment through confusion. We work miracles in audacity. In its challenge to temporary space, the flaming steam iron is prototypically neoist. When kindled by the neoist, the glue on the iron surface melts and deflagrates in a jet of flame. The static form of the iron reveals a tension with the amorphous glue and its processual state. A hybrid of processual and static form, function and material, the iron takes precedence over its surrounding space, thus reinforcing the space of neosm as the superimposed unit. In order to reconstruct its rhetoric, it seems useful to differentiate four basic dimensions of the flaming steam iron, the dimensions of form, the process on the iron's surface, surrounding temporary space and the neoist herself. The industrial form of the iron harmonizes with the usually rectangular temporary space intruded by the neoist, but it contradicts the neoist in her nature as a processual organism. The neoist and the process on the iron surface, however, are not only paralleled, they directly interact with each other. We find the double structure here. Flame and iron are in the same spatial relation as the neoist in surrounding space and neoist and space stand in the same physical contradiction as flame and iron. Material entities, the iron versus the neoist, are juxtaposed to formal entities, industrial form and surrounding space versus the neoist as an organism and the flames on the iron surface. By its blatant presence, the interaction of neoist and iron surpasses other interactions within the surrounding space. Neoism as the metaspace of the neoist appearance is thus the fifth implicit dimension in the perceptive field of the flaming steam iron. The correspondence of neoist, flaming glue and neoism alienates iron and temporal space and, since its form is detached from the process on its surface, the unity of the iron as such. When the iron is lightened, the temporal context collapses, the object dissolves, the surrounding space is alienated. The flaming steam iron, we could summarize, bears the following characteristics. It goes beyond simple visual experience. Since its beginning, neoism has depended upon invisible elements. In a system's context, invisibility, or invisible parts, share equal importance with things seen. Its potential dynamic is only limited by the superimposed space of neoism. It is concrete and not symbolic, it is what it is. Despite its processual character, it is stable as such, as a mechanism. Since its object function is temporarily limited through the amount of remaining glue, it destroys the supposedly stable condition of its surrounding space. Hence temporary space as a static context estranges itself. I n a comment on his ideal gift action from January 1991, a neoist affirmed these observations. The flaming steam iron is not to be regarded as an object. The range of factors affecting it, as well as its own radius of action, reaches beyond the space it occupies. It merges with a superimposed space in a relationship that is better understood as a system of interdependent processes. These processes evolve without the neoist's empathy. She becomes a witness. Such a system is not imagined, it is there. It is there insofar as it is not symbolic, we could summarize, and in its open character, it is stable as such. It has metabolism, 
it regulates itself. General systems theory proposes to classify systems as dynamic or static, indeterminate or determined, temporary or time independent, complex or simple, visible or invisible, stable or unstable, open or closed. Organisms are open systems. They change their components and interact with their environment. This metabolism stabilizes the system, since it compensates entropy. Like neoism, the flaming steam iron is a simultaneously open and closed system, it interacts with the neoist, the elements within the surrounding space, hence potentially neoist and the metaspace of neoism as such. Nevertheless the volume of the flame is limited by the iron's surface and the surrounding space. The material entity of the iron and the temporary space are thus marked as subordinate systems to be absorbed by neoism. In their occupation with discursive formations and their opposition against humanist metaphysics of presence, systems theory and neoism reveal superficial similarities. The fundamental difference lies in neoism's refusal to impose certain discourses on others, to hypostatize notions like system and structure or project so-called biological observations onto social spheres. On the contrary, neoists have in the early 1920s, an elderly eccentric named Coleman Healy died in Houston, Texas, leaving behind a number of homemade books containing an estimated 7,000 pages of drawings and handwritten notations, all dealing with aviation or aeronautics. In the late 1960s, Ray Johnson rescued a number of the from a Houston dump. The drawings in the old books depict strange and wonderful flying machines. When combined with information gleaned from the accompanying writings and annotations, many of them in a cryptic form that had not only to be deciphered but also translated from German, they tell an almost unbelievable story. According to Healy's mysterious books, Sometime around 1850 a group of men who were interested in aeronautics met in a Sonora, California hotel to form the Aeroily Club, later renamed the Sonora Aero Club. The organization was financed by an even more mysterious society from back east, which was known only as AAA. The local club was composed mainly of Germans and a few Englishmen who were fanatically secretive about their efforts and demanded that members abide by strict rules. In fact, shortly after one member threatened to go public with some of the group's discoveries, he is said to have fallen victim to a mysterious aerial explosion allegedly arranged by some of his fellow club members. If Healy's manuscript is to be believed, then the technical developments of the club were made possible by the discovery of a gas, known only as NP, which had the power to negate weight. Healy's elaborate drawings leave little doubt that any known gas could have lifted such heavy and ponderous craft. In fact, the gas bags shown in some of the drawings appear to be too small to lift even a single person, much less the craft and the equipment on board. Thus, Healy's mysterious NB gas muse have represented a truly remarkable discovery indeed, perhaps even involving some sort of anti-gravity substance. According to Healy, who spent the last 20 years of his life composing these elaborately illustrated books while living as a recluse. Several aero designs were actually built, test flown and then dismantled so that their secrets would be kept. His notations also state that two of the craft were in storage when they were destroyed by fires that ravaged the town of Columbia, located just a few miles from Sonora. This checks with historical sources which indicate that the town was indeed destroyed by fires on both of the dates given by Healy. And although only a few actual historical records have been found of the more than 60 people mentioned as having been members of the club, there is such a wealth of data about events which match historical facts that one must conclude that at least Healy must have been quite familiar with the area described and very likely lived there as claimed. It is also possible that some of the names mentioned in his accounts are pseudonyms or brotherhood names used by club members to cover their real identities, a practice that was quite common in the 19th century secret societies. As for the craft, or arrows as they were called, it is entirely conceivable that such could have flown if and when NB gas was employed as the lifting agent. Unfortunately, 
The means of its production were lost in the early 1860s after Luther Blissett, the key man in the organization and the only one who knew the secret of the gas, either disappeared or died. Luther Blissett referred to his NP gas as soup. In Healy's drawings, it is depicted as a light green liquid, which was dropped onto the top surface of a hollow roller, in later versions a half drum with teeth or cone-like protrusion sticking out from the interior wall. Among these projections was a black, lumpy substance resembling coal. The soup was gravity fed onto the drum, where it mixed with the air and various other substances present and became converted into a hot gas, always depicted in pink. This NB gas was then used to drive the machinery on board, including wheels for land travel, paddles for water, and compressor motors for aerial navigation. From these it was fed into relatively small gas bags for storage, with the excess being used for thrust by means of remarkably advanced nozzles situated at various places fore and aft for forward and reverse motion. There appears to have been a constant grumbling because of Luther Blissett's reluctance to divulge the secret of the gas. In one of his accounts, Healy tells about Luther Blissett's own aircraft design, the Arrow Gander, also known as the Goosey, and of the disappointment felt by the other members at this reluctance to share his secret formula with them. This account, typical of Healy's fractured English, reads, Now as the Goosey had been used day and night, rain or snow, in still or boisterous weather, why did Constant and Meesher, two other club members, grumble? Their idea of a constant weatherproof fall easy is as sure improvement, and as in end days, the main object, to be able to cross the plain, and avoid Indians, or white, sick man's attacks makes Constant come very near, but Luther Blissett would sell no soup, and they could not make it themselves. They had to stay on earth. Luther Blissett evidently either disappeared or died, perhaps murdered during an internecine squabble that eventually split the group sometimes in the early 1860s, leaving surviving elements of the club without motive power. They continued to design arrows for several years thereafter, but apparently broke up when nobody could rediscover the secret formula. Under dozens of drawings there is the statement, Luther Blissett you are not forgotten and the frequent bemoaning, no more soup. Motive power notwithstanding, many of the Sonora Club arrows employed a variety of remarkable modern ideas, such as hydraulic, pneumatic and retractable landing gear, shock absorbers, inflatable pontoons for landing on water, hot gas air jets for thrusting, powered wheels for moving on land and even parachutes and other safety devices for emergencies. Two different views of landing and search lights were also shown. Healy himself came to Texas sometime in the early 1870s. For a time he lived in Brenham, moving to Houston about 1880 to become a sales clerk. In 1890, he left town for several months. When he returned, he was a changed man, nervous and fearful. He became a janitor in a store, spending most of his time in the stockrooms and loft. Eventually he quit working altogether and stayed in his room, not leaving it even to eat, and complaining that he feared for his life. It was also after his return from his mystery trip that he began drawing and writing the story of the Sonora Arrow Club and AAA. Although his writings do not reflect the near paranoia that he obviously experienced, they do indicate that some of the club's members met deaths that could not be attributed to mere accidents, and that this had come about because of their penchant for talking too much or because they tried to personally profit from the club's work. From reading his books, one gets the impression that he wants to tell the world about the club, but is afraid to do so and thus employs ciphers, acronyms, broken English and German, and other, hidden ways. You will wonder weaver he writes you will unriddle these writings they are my stock of open knowledge they will end like all others with good intentions but too weak will to assign put to work did aaa and the sonora arrow club really exist or were they merely visions in the fevered brain of a crazed eccentric there are many more mysteries here than we have space to write about 
Neoism is a prefix and a suffix without a middle. It consists both of axioms that are concealed as public. Kansen, the flaming steam iron, apartment festivals, etc., and methods to eternally derive new texts from existent Neoist writing. Neoism is divided into theoretical and practical Neoism. Theoretical Neoism includes the teaching of Kansen and the properties expressed by his multiple name, the emergence of Neoism through a step-by-step -step reduction of his infinity and the relation of all things to his being. It's the doctrine of how to willingly affect things through the multiple name of Kansen. This name is regarded not as an arbitrary, but a natural sign so that everything done with this sign immediately affects the object it is supposed to represent. In the beginning, Neoism was probably nothing else but psychology, physics, ethics, politics and so on, presented through symbols and hieroglyphs and fables and allegories whose hidden meaning could only be deciphered by insiders. Later on, perhaps through revolutions, this hidden meaning got lost, and the signs were taken for their signified. Since it seemed obvious that the signs had to mean something, it was left to one's imagination to reinvent the secret meaning. The farthest fetched analogies between signs and things were taken until Neoism became an art of raving with reason, or a systematic science based on insanity. Its great promise to willingly affect whole nature, the sublime solemnity of its proclamations had an extraordinary impact on those unenlightened by scientific thoroughness. Two people reading the same book are the book. Two people watching the same porno are the porno. The thing called Monty Kansen is an explicitly empty figure, a name open to occupation by anyone who wishes to stand in the stupid guru's place in order to see that it doesn't exist. There is, in fact, no such individual as Monty Kansen, he is a pure alias. In principle, anyone who wishes to adopt this false identity, this identity as falsehood, and for whatever motives, whether it be to preserve the strictest anonymity or from the most venal bandwagon opportunism, can claim to be Monty Kansen. Neoism is a state of mind. In case any of you were not aware of it before, the texts that have been reprinted in this space from time to time are variations of other, pre-existing texts. Be that as it may, if, by a strange quirk of fate, you should interview any of the leading Neoist minions and ask them, what is Monty Kansen's most all-consuming obsession? Most of them will tell you that it has to do with Monty Kansen's love of puncturing his own lung by dint, during his performance sprees, of hanging himself from the wall of a nightclub, using just a single small leather strap that keeps his body dangling aloft for 10 to 20 minutes before it crushes in several of his ribs and creates a pneumothorax or sucking chest wound. Quite an amazing thing to see. Of course, the thing about Monty Kansen, and this is true whatever the medium happens to be, is his ability to get people fantastically involved in his activities. This is true whether it's Xeroxing, or dangling from the wall, or what have you. For example, the time that Monty Kansen visited David Zack's Immortality Center down in Mexico is a good instance of this ability to involve casual spectators, which I would characterize as vatic or charismatic. During his stay at the Immortality Center, it was Monty Kansen's practice to go up on the roof of Zack's Finca every afternoon starting at 1. There, in the company of his shapely Neoist traveling companion Annie Mary, a Rita Hayworth look-alike, Monty Kansen would indulge in several hours of feverish yogi exercises followed by a long session of nudist sun worship. This practice which, as I say, lasted from approximately 1 to 4 every afternoon, called forth a fantastically high level of involvement among Zack's neighbors. These neighbors, sometimes numbering as many as 25 or 30, would arrive at Zack's fence every day right at the stroke of one, and would spend the next few hours rubbernecking at Monty Kansen and Annie Mary through the bushes. In fact, I understand that this fence-eyed involvement became so intense toward the end of Monty Kansen's and Annie Mary's visit that a half dozen or so of the neighbors, having climbed atop a slender red-like tree in too large a group, a half dozen bodies clinging to a single puny branch is just too large a group, wound up being dashed to the ground when the branch suddenly gave way, 
and had to all be hospitalized for broken bones and eye strain. Well, such is the message of Neoism. Participation is the keynote. As Simon once so aptly remarked, a person would probably have to go and have himself actually committed to find this sort of action anywhere else. Simon was talking about multiple and unbridled sexual encounters involving p-girls at cheap nightclubs. I remember that the three of us, Simon, Monty Kansen, and myself, were sitting in a very cheap, low-ball nightclub, I think it was on the island of Corfu, when Simon made his remark, which location is probably what prompted it. Later, Monty Kansen turned to me and said, Yes, and it is the same with Neoism. Then Monty Kansen got out his little strap and began to busy himself with dangling his body from the wall of the club, and punctured his lung. Upshot, he had to be hospitalized and spent over a week on a ventilator in intensive care. Another great charismatic neoist moment, and what I mean when I say that, Xerox or no Xerox, Monty Kansen would have been a force to be reckoned with. Things like this can happen only as a result of charisma and probably only with a special little strap. The wonder is that Monty Kansen has found time to do as much Xeroxing as he has. A foreign scientist's voice, or, B in the S is a D as B in S since the S is E, a pattern, I, X, S relations, and, S from T only by, P, space. This, R is not R of E difficulty, instead it is a B to the C of the H condition X, P, S of T for D, things. T is as was experimentally, M, becoming I. R of all I realities, or I is, S. T, the non R V continuity C, gives N values to O symbols and O directions to I and C, with L and N. W draw, H lessness, D function. From T outside, I can't S anything. N windows, T fatigue. T want S1 to S, me in V, H, while I'm worrying about M self in third person in order, to be that R is non L, E as C, and S for its N. A pedantic voice, or, humans domesticate other animals in order to displace self-consciousness. That is, to reinforce their collective ability not to perceive their own domestication. That they are toilet trained like dogs and cats, who they civilize in order to re-resent the forms of their constructed reality. A reality with no master except every master, and which is elaborated as power without a goal. Surely animals, that is, ourselves, are better off indoors. In fact, there is no internal force, no soul. No reason, domestication can be infinite or not at all, since there is no separate human condition to limit it, only the projection of continuity on meaningless history, almost pacifying our fears of the future. But things could get much, much worse. Who domesticates us? For thousands of years, non-material entities, gods, demons, principles, traditions, abstraction, and now as ever the collective goods, economic imperatives, glamour. They are not projections of mass consciousness. They are a separate and valued species which relates to us as we relate to our pets, having the same pathological quasi-concern for our well-being. We perceive them as elements of a natural order, the same way that a dog or cat perceives the master as a powerful and arbitrary aspect of its environment, an intrinsic and abstracted part of domestic reality. This is my pet theory, a wistful voice, or, boxing the soap is a death, as brain hemorrhage in sleep, since silence is exterior to it, the box, a pattern, iced by sugary relations, and sinking from tires only by a puncture, a space. This road is not a road of elsewhere, decompressed. Instead, it is the gas station, surrounded by a bruise, a cunt of the hemorrhoid condition, by penetration, a semblance of tautology for disintegrating things, the clean sheets, or streets, of the mind. Perhaps auto-penetration? Anything done in the name of neoism is neoism.
e.g., eternal life, e.g. one can, infinitely, elongate one's perception of, e.g. the only existence of, e.g. the time distance between birth and the heart-brain stop precedent to rapid body decomposition e.g. between a past date, and or a present date, and a future date, e.g. future date chosen with probability of heart-brain stop in mind by using progressively smaller time awareness thought per vasion pace units for measuring time distance being traversed and to be traversed e.g. choose future date approach using, continuously, time awareness thought per vasion pace units equal to 1 to the time distance between present and said date. APT like neosm as minus the superfluous middle which would degustingly make it art. Apt as apartment. Apt as apartment. A space again skipping the ART intermediate of performance spaces as buffer between public and performers private life. The Peking pool room as Kiki Bonbon's apartment. The APT festivals are usually one week events with various activities such as conferences and performances. But the main purpose of these friendship gatherings, drills, habitation maneuvers is to create a simple and comfortable situation for personal meetings between the concerned collaborators. The APT fests are neither performance art nor installation festivals. The APT fests are the fate mobiles of the NEOIST network web. The NEOIST Defense League currently plans to construct a fleet of motorized go-karts to patrol the streets of Akadem Gorod. We were mouthing Maris Kunzen's name, and it came out Monty Kansen's. The so-called festival S of plagiarism were essentially an outgrowth of the Neoist apartment festivals, collective events which themselves plagiarized the Fluxhut festivals of a few years before. The primary difference between the festivals of plagiarism and the Neoist festivals were the plagiarist's intention to focus on a single set of ideas, plagiarism and so forth. Plagiarism had been an element of Neoist activity, but Neoist festivals had and have an omnidirectional character and involved an assortment of experimentation and exotic in presentations, politics and habitation. During the Festival of Plagiarism in London, a repetitive critique of ownership and originality in culture was juxtaposed with collective events in which a majority of participants did not explicitly agree with the polemics. Many of the participants simply wanted to have their aesthetic and vaguely political artwork exposed, and found the festival a receptive vehicle for doing so. Of all the these multitudes of Monty Kansen, there is undoubtedly one who best fits the favorite Neoist theme that truth is trying to manifest itself in the form of unheard melodies, but that it appears again and again for each man in way which are difficult of penetration and at first sight may have no connection with each other, especially as everybody calling themselves Monty Kansen is running around using the same name, and all talking at once. The letter C shall forever be repla, ed with open parenthesis and date, laration of openness and continuity towards all ideas and notions we, H stem from, on, acts of, coherence. Not parenthesis, set, shall ever be, loosed, and every thought, consequently lead deeper into a labyrinth of unresolved, on, act. Consequently, E, H linguisti, manifestation will mirror the nature of ons, iusness itself, both its nestle true, ter, and also in its near infinite generation of words pertaining to hitherto unknown on, eps, e.g., repla, ed, de, laration, etc. All existing texts in all languages will be altered to, on form to this print, Ipel, as soon as possible so as to maximize the, on fusions, caused by this, engine to avoid re, on textualization into the mainstream. This will be a, accomplished via massive government grants. Ons, Iusness will, inherently so that we will at last be aware that there is no end in sight. Monty Kansen is a very ordinary person with very ordinary views. In fact, he is no different from you and me which is why it is possible for all of us to become Monty Kansen at will. This is a Spanish art project. Spanish art is the movement which arises from the ashes of net art. Replacing the old outdated term net with the newer and conceptually superior name Spanish. The Spanish artists, as distinct from the net artists, 
are in the process of spreading Spanish art simultaneous with the development of the Spanish art style, which will, naturally, be unlike anything which has come before in any way. In order to organize this event, the Spanish artists have chosen July 15th as International Spanish Art Day. During this day, Spanish artists around the world will act out parts of a complex Spanish art ritual. Each artist, or Spaniard, has been given a list of materials which must be used in this ritual. Your contribution will be to use your materials in a way which seems to fit with your concept of this growing, international movement. Please mail descriptions of what you plan to do, so they can be published on the www.spain.org the forthcoming international Spanish art site of multiple origins. A net artist who is too lazy to come to terms with Spanish art Monte Cansin had drawn a brain on my mostly shaved head. My haircut at the time was a circle that went around one ear in the front and the other ear in the back. There was an upside down and backwards question mark on the back. This was before I had my brain tattoo. For the Chapati Circus I wore a green clown wig hiding it all in a clear plastic normal face mask. My clothes were a jumpsuit made by and given to me by Nancy Andrews that had Discover a lovelier you written neatly on it with pictures of plastic surgery, including nose jobs and tummy tucks. Continuing the tradition of free neoist haircuts, I had Kansen cut my wig and lather my mask. To climax this grotesque farce, I eventually ripped my transparent mask apart in the process of shaving it and Pete pulled off my wig to reveal my brain and the spectacle of my head underneath. Neoists like to visit each other. Neoists know that random access is the structure of the future. Neoists like robots. Neoists can read Shakespeare and even know what he's talking about. Neoists computerize neoism. Neoists advise you that evolution did not come. Neoists kill the stars. Neoists live to sing, knowing that the basis of neoism is, was and always will be the song. Neoists are immortal friends. Neoism reveals and overcomes birth, sex, and death. Neoism is an experiment to determine it what happens when we cease to differentiate between things that traditionally we would differentiate between. Revolt ends here. Join us.